And so in 1964, um, Arno Penzis and Robert Wilson, who are astronomers, um, were working at Bell Research Labs in New Jersey. So those were the days when the big companies had enormous research laboratories. Um, and Bell was a prime example. And they basically did blue skies research there. And this, you can imagine, was a very good thing because that's where the transistor was discovered and the laser was discovered. So it's a great argument for that. And it's something that is difficult these days because one of the first things to go in the economic crunch has been these big laboratories. So I think that's a poor omen for the future. Anyway, way back in the 60s, it was a great place to be. And they were assigned a telescope that was used for the first communications with communication satellites, but then went out, then they up, it was updated by the company, and so they were given it to play with to do astronomy, and they surveyed um, the galaxy, the Milky Way, and they found this mysterious relic buzz when they took away the Milky Way, all this stuff, um, this relic, very weak relic radiation field um, that eventually they realized was from the Big Bang. Um, and um, and uh, it, it's not by any means as weak as you might think. If you turn on a TV set in between the channels, you look at the noise on the screen, the static on the screen, 1% of that noise, 1% is roughly the intensity of what they were measuring in, as this relic from the Big Bang. Okay, um, and they also were given the Nobel Prize for discovery some years later. Okay, so going back then to um, their initial data, which they stumbled on by accident, as it were, so this was, go, going back then to, um, to 1964, 1965, so this is one point on this curve. This is the wavelength and the intensity of the radiation. One point is what they measured. And from this, they made this incredible, or others made this incredible assumption at the time, the cosmologists, who were very, had some wishful thinking, of course, but they had rediscovered gamma and alpha and so forth very soon afterwards, and um, they said, well, let's just draw this curve through it. This curve is, a, is what we call a black body curve. This is a perfect furnace radiation, and it's cooled down to a few degrees Kelvin now. This could be the relic from the Big Bang. Okay, so that was 1964, one point. Then we fast forward a few years, and then, of course, this was very, very popular among the astronomers. And so there was this immense race now to add more and more points to the curve. And you can see it's beginning to take shape, except that at that time, there was a huge controversy about what happened over here at high frequencies. Very, very hard to measure, but some experiments claimed it was very, very different from this so-called black body curve. Okay, well, everything changed with the ultimate measurement, which was done in 1990 by, the, by a satellite experiment, finally, um, the COBE satellite. And here is the data from that satellite. And you can see it's amazing data, right? Um, it fits this predicted curve beautifully, and this predicted curve, which peaks at microwave frequencies, is the three degree Kelvin relic, that's the equivalent temperature, um, peaking at microwaves of the fossil radiation from the Big Bang. Okay, so that's um, uh, uh, a truly convincing measurement, if ever there was one. In fact, this is as good a black body as you can find anywhere, even in the laboratory. You can see, probably see a better one in the sky now. Okay, with, with such incredibly tight error bars. Uh, 